Okay, episode three. Thank you for watching it with me. Definitely uh, made it more fun. Um, thought I'd break out my other Percy Jackson shirt, you know, mix it up a little. Um, so uh, I just showed Wilda the first three episodes of Percy Jackson. I had already seen the first two, but the third one we watched Ron No Rubber together. Um, so uh, she's read the first five Percy Jackson books, by the way. So she's familiar. She's also seen... You've seen the first movie, right? Yeah. I don't think you saw the second one. I'm pretty sure I saw the second movie. All right. Well, you've at least seen my reviews, so you know. <laughs> um, so why don't you give... Uh, they they know my thoughts. Why don't you give them your thoughts on the first two episodes real quick? <laughs> Go ahead and powerball through it. Um, <laughs> so I never thought I'd say this, but um, that garbage first movie was actually better than the first three <laughs> episodes of this fucking waste that was my life. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Um, okay, wow. <laughs> Yeah, like, no, she, I swear to God, guys, I, I told her nothing going in, because I didn't want to influence her opinion, she hadn't seen my video on the first two episodes, she was saying all the same stuff I was saying, um, oh, and a couple things I forgot to mention about that first episode, I thought it was really dumb that Percy doesn't fall into the water before beating up the Ares kids, is he beating them just because he's near the water, or is... Or do they just suck? Osmosis. <laughs> air. Water particles. He's, he's using the water in the <laughs> air like Frozone. <laughs> but you, you guys know, like, my thoughts on the first two episodes, like, I had a lot of problems. Like, I the, it, the pacing, I thought, was terrible. Things were too rushed. Moments weren't breathing. Percy wasn't able to find stuff out on his own. His friendship with, with Grover felt really badly executed. And he felt like a little too angsty of a teenager character. Uh, but overall, I thought it was fine. I, I, I was kind of enjoying the look of it. I was enjoying a couple of jokes. You know, fun fact, during the first two episodes, Wild and I agreed that even though Gabe is, is not his book self, at least he's a little funny. And at least Dionysus is a little funny. And Wilda said, why is it that the douchebag characters are the only ones that I'm enjoying? And I said to her, well, it's probably because they're the only actors having fun. And the best thing about the Percy Jackson series was how much fun it was. But instead of fun, all we're getting is constant exposition dumps <laughs> from everyone. <laughs> And by the way, one argument I want to address really quick that everyone and their grandma keeps bringing up is, oh, you shouldn't have a problem with anything here because Rick himself signed off on all these changes. Look, it's good to have the original author involved that has shown in Game of Thrones. George R. R. Martin was heavily involved early on, mm -hmm. and then we stopped being involved, it kind of plummeted. But it doesn't always mean it's going to work. Just because you can write really great books, and I love Rick Ryder and I think he's a wonderful author, it doesn't mean you can write a good screenplay. It doesn't mean you know what works in a TV show. A couple of great examples, like J.K. Rowling wrote Harry Potter books, which were worldwide sensations. She was extremely involved in the Fantastic Beast movies, and two <laughs> of those movies were absolute dog shit garbage. Okay? George Lucas has some wonderful ideas and great ideas for lore in his world but the second he became in charge of everything with the prequels it plummeted and things got really bad okay rick is a wonderful writer and i love his work i enjoy every single one of his books i don't know whose fault some of the things <laughs> in this show are but it's led me to believe that you know rick's it's great that he's involved, but he's not guaranteed good quality. Rick, blink, blink twice. <laughs> blink, blink if twice. you're being held against your will. <laughs> so I was really hoping it would get better in episode three, because as all of you guys pointed out, okay, maybe we're done with the exposition mm. now and the real story can begin. Now that the three are together, we can see that amazing dynamic that and chemistry, chemistry. That incredible chemistry that everyone's been touting about, that Rick has been touting about, that all of you have been touting to me about, saying, when, when I said in my trailer reactions, I'm not too sure about this casting, and you all said, yes, but Rick cast them because their chemistry is perfect perfect and their dynamic is perfect i was like all right we'll, we'll, i'll see it we'll wait and see it what did you think of the chemistry <laughs> hun 
Like, <laughs> what, did you, what did you think of their chemistry? What chemistry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. It's not here. Or if it is, I missed it. Help me find it. Help me find what I've, I missed. I've never <laughs> seen such poor chemistry that I actually wanted one of the main characters to no longer exist <laughs> in the show. <laughs> She's talking about Grover. And you know what? In her defense, none of the characters in the show want Grover around either. We noticed in the first two episodes and even a little in the third episode, every time Grover enters a scene, they tell him to leave. <laughs> Every single time he enters a scene and either Dionysus or Mr. Brunner or whatever will be even like Even the horse. Yeah, yeah, even the Pegasus. Like Grover comes in and they and says something and they're like, hey, Grover, stop talking. Grover, no. Grover, now's not the time. Grover, that I'll take it from here. Grover, you can get out of here. Episode three, he's talking to the Pegasus and and, and Grover's like, alright, alright, and leaves. It's like even the horse doesn't want him around. I feel so bad for this actor. It's like like so he gets cast so what am i gonna do you're gonna be a punching bag <laughs> <laughs> you're the new shut up meg <laughs> wait but he's percy's best friend <sighs> yeah when percy went up to him and told him like the reason he wants him on his journey is because he trusts him like more than anyone look that by itself would not be a bad scene that would actually be a very cute scene you said this too if you had the stuff that led up to it properly, but you didn't. They actually had a foundation of fucking friendship. I've, they've never had, they haven't had one genuine sweet moment in this show. All they've had is Grover betraying Percy <laughs> for no reason. Percy being angsty and dismissive of Grover. Everyone else telling Grover to shut up or go away. <laughs> and then Grover saying, Percy, your mom's alive. Ah, now I trust you with my life. <laughs> Like it's it's not working. I'm sorry, it's not working. I want to work. I want it to work. I went in the show wanting to like it. No one will. Anyone who knows me will tell you how much I love the Percy Jackson series, yes. <laughs> and I want it to be great. But honestly, at this point, I don't care anymore. <laughs> Okay, let's not be a Debbie Downer the whole time. Here's some things I did like. Um, so far, Luke is okay. Yeah, Luke he's, is one of the better he's actors. Actually got, he's actually got the most genuineness so far. Yeah. Like, you know, the way he talks to Percy, he's like, you know, he seems like a nice guy. I could, I could see it. But even then, it doesn't feel like quite enough for mm -hmm. what's supposed to happen later in the plot. Yeah. You know, like he, I talked in my episode one and two video when Percy says, I feel like I've made real friends <laughs> here. I swear to God, when we were watching the episode, I said nothing. And when we got to that scene and he said, I feel like I've made real friends. She went, who? <laughs> who? Wait, plural? <laughs> what friends? <laughs> I swear to God, I wish I had filmed it. <laughs> Like, <laughs> it was so perfect. We are so insane. I know. I know. <laughs> um, and yeah, another thing everyone's been saying is, like, so there's been a ton of controversy over the Annabeth casting because she's not the same race as Annabeth was in the books. And, you know, like... People are not happy about that. People are, you know, arguing about, oh, is it racist or whatever. I think the main reason people are angry is because they want to see a character they're a big fan of come to life on the screen. Mm -hmm. So I understand that side. And there's other people who are saying, oh, the race shouldn't matter. And I kind of get where you're coming from. There. Look, you can be on either side of it. Here's the only thing I want to address. Everyone has been saying the reason this girl was cast as Annabeth is because she's the best fit for the character. Because she's such a good actress, and you can take a look at Wilda's face <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, I'm so glad you're here, because me looking like what I look like, some people probably wouldn't listen to what I say. But this girl's a kid. I feel bad saying this, but... It, it might be poor direction, I don't yeah, know, but be. so far she's the weakest actor in the show. Yeah. Every line she says feels so much like a line being read off a script. Right. And feels really wooden and disingenuous, and it's, it's just not flowing. Right, <clears throat> and I mean, despite her, like, in spite of her being, like, a kid... I mean, you can compare other child actors. Like, Hermione was very, like, charming and, like, you really felt for her and it felt like she had a lot of, um, what is it, multi-dimensionality? Like, 
to her character. Yeah, yeah, layered, I think, yeah, is just, what you're yeah, going yeah. for. Yeah, her, Harry Potter is a series where I read the books before seeing the movies, and as soon as Hermione showed up and started talking, I was like, that's Hermione. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not feeling that with this Annabeth. I'm really not feeling it. And I know this girl's been, uh, like, a ton of people went and harassed this girl on Twitter after she mm. got cast, and that's horrible. You should not do that. Mm. But so far, I don't know why she was cast. Like... Yeah. Maybe she'd be good in something else, but this isn't it. This just isn't it, fam. No, <laughs> like, no. Ah, and this um, episode continues the trend of things just happening, and then whoop, bye, uh, again with the Furies, <laughs> again, once on again on the bus, taking their true form in broad daylight in front of everyone. Annabeth puts on her cap of invisibility in front of everyone, and no one so much as lifts their head, and they just walk over, and the characters immediately leave, and the scene is over. I'm like, what even just happened? I don't even... What? What? Who? What? When? Where? Why? What could have been a really tense scene if it was more like the book where just these three old women get on the bus and Percy suddenly recognizes one of them as Miss Dodds. And when they get on the bus, they sit in the front and two of them cross their legs like in front of everyone as a sign in order to make sure no one can get off oh. the bus. And then they start slowly moving towards the back. You could have had a really tense scene yeah. where the kids are trying to figure out how do we get off the bus before yeah. they get all the way back here. It's the scene's over and like, smash window, everyone up, move it. Oh, one of them's dead. Oh, wait, what happened? Oh, and now we're in the woods. Next chapter. I don't even know what the hell is happening. And so many of you are going to tell me, well, you know, a mythology guy, they only have so much time. They have such limited time. They have to get through everything. They got to boom, boom, boom. Okay, two things. One, they keep adding in pointless crap that wasn't in the book. Annabeth has a full-on conversation with one of the Furies that wasn't in the book, and that is pointless. It adds nothing to the story. And again, the bad acting, it's really not working. And it's also exposition dumped characters talking to each other the way they would oh. never talk in real life. And you know, if they didn't have enough time, they should have cut out that stupid fucking song, Grover. Oh, God. <laughs> we both looked at each other when he started doing that. Like, what is happening right now? <laughs> oh, man. Um... Yeah, and they're, this group has no chemistry. It's not working. They're all, nobody's likable right now. Um, and uh, another thing I'm going to say, because people keep saying, oh, well, it's a TV show. You know, you have to condense for a TV show. Oh, the action scene can't look amazing because it's a TV show budget. Oh, that can't be executed properly because it's a TV show. Okay, here's the thing. If you can't make it good, don't make it. That's my honest opinion. If you can't adapt a book series into a good TV show? Don't. Okay? And some of you might be thinking, well, they have to do it, you know, because, you know, all studios want, want to make money. Well, you know what? I don't have to support it, and I don't have to say nice things about it. There have been way better examples of this kind of stuff done right. Harry Potter is a good adaptation. It's not perfect. People have made videos about certain things that got wrong here and there, but still, they agree that as a complete piece, it works, and it's entertaining. Um, Lord of the Rings is a fantastic example of a great adaptation. Uh, game, early Game of Thrones was doing it very well up until they ran out of books to adapt. Okay, so it can be done right. And I'm sick and tired of the excuse of, oh, when you adapt, you have to ruin it. No, you don't. Okay? It, and oh my god, Medusa. <laughs> oh my god, Medusa in this episode. Um, he threw the... I, I threw the tissue box at the TV. I was so done. <laughs> like, she was laughing her ass off watching me watch this show when we got to Medusa. Holy guacamole, I couldn't take it anymore. Oh, oh. It, but then, like, at first I was so mad... And then when they revealed the second half, I just got so confused. <laughs> and then it ended, and I was like, I guess we're done. And you were like, that's it? That's all you're going to do? <laughs> so, they... These action scenes just blue balls. <laughs> yeah, there's... Uh... It's like the Minotaur scene felt like a start. Even though it was short, yeah. it was like, okay, that's a start. That's a little sample of what's to come. You know, maybe there'll be a lot more later. But the, but the Fury scene was nothing twice. And the Medusa scene was nothing. 
So it's like... And I thought it was going to be, like, really cool. Like, it seemed like there was, like, a maze of statues. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was going to be suspenseful and, like... I thought that, You too. know, at least, I don't know, five minutes? Oh. Right? Of oh, tense. That oh. would have been really good. Oh, my God. So... So they get to Medusa's garden while, I guess, being chased by one of the Furies. And it... <laughs> Again, I, I talked about... Yeah, Chased by My Fury. <laughs> I talked about this in the last video, how in the books, Percy slowly figures out that the Minotaur is chasing them. But in this show, it's just immediate, that's the Minotaur. In the books, slowly, Percy slowly figures out that the camp director is Dionysus. And it's actually kind of entertaining because you yourself can put it together at the same time. Yeah. But in the show, Grover immediately runs in and says, that's Dionysus. I remember when you saw him do that, you went, oh, God. <laughs> Like, now, again, in the show, they get to Medusa's roadside garden, and in the books, it's something that's built up slowly over time, and you yourself can put it together as Percy puts mm -hmm. it together. In the show, they get there, and immediately, Annabeth, because we have to make Annabeth look so damn smart, goes, mm, Auntie M's um, uh, garden, huh? She's got a lot of statues, huh? Definitely from our world, huh? What do you think M stands for, huh? <laughs> and it's like, we get it! Shut up! <laughs> like, God damn it! And, um, yeah, then the Fury shows up, but then Medusa also shows up, and her outfit's fine. It's I actually kind of like the creative yeah. hat and everything. I, I thought the way she was dressed was cool. But, man, people keep missing what I think is the point of Medusa. Look, I'm not some narcissist who's going to say, my idea is the definitive idea. But as someone who's read a ton of mythology... I think, like, Medusa... There's so many versions of Medusa... And uh, I think one of the main points of Medusa is that it's a lesson about, like, it's a cautionary tale about vanity. Like, whether it be, like, staring at someone's vanity or having your own vanity. <laughs> I'm sorry, did the show put you to sleep? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still recovering. And, like, Medusa's supposed to be cursed to be in a monstrous form. One thing I hated in the Percy Jackson movie was she just... Like, Uma Thurman, good casting, but she literally just, like, Uma, looked like Uma Thurman with snakes. Like, do some makeup. Put some scales on her. Give her some fangs. Make her look ugly. Medusa's supposed to be so ugly. That's supposed to be why looking at her turns you to stone. Is because she's so hideous. It ties into the whole vanity thing. Mm -hmm. Like, she used to be so proud of her looks, in the Hesiod version, anyway. She used to be so proud of her looks, and now anyone who even looks at her will turn to stone. But no, the movie just made her a hot Uma Thurman with snake hair. And now, again, we've got just regular looking woman with snake hair. Like, in the books, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure she she was wearing the veil and ha had the whole rest of her body covered because she was still monstrous mm. in almost every way. And it really bummed me out as a missed opportunity because in uh, in episode two, they have a dryad interact with Grover and the makeup is great. Oh, yeah. She looks so good. so good. Like, yeah, she looks so good. And I really like when someone does really good makeup effects, especially in a mythology show. And you couldn't have given Medusa some scales, especially since you put no mystery behind it. She enters and immediately says she's Medusa. It's like you might as well give her scaly, creative looking skin. But no, you want the lamest, easiest, like simplest, bare minimum design you could possibly do. Mm. Like, literally, oh, her eyes are a little gray and there's snakes on her head. And I'll bet you the only reason they have snakes on her head is because that's one of the most has-to-be-there things with Medusa. Mm. You know, it could have been cool, as someone who has snakes. Um, <laughs> she has cool, snakes, yeah. Cool, where, uh, for example, she looks kind of normal, whatever, initially. But then when you zoom in on her veiled face, maybe you can see some uh, snake shed a little bit over here. That would be like, cool. Just, yeah. like, little hints that there's something not right. Ooh, yeah. What if she had, like, a thin layer of human skin over the snake skin and as the scene went on like it was yeah. shedding slowly and coming off hey we came up with that in two minutes <laughs> like wouldn't that be cool as the scene gets darker and more foreboding because when she first shows up she acts all friendly right. but then you could have as she's revealing her true nature her true skin starts coming out oh that's creepy <sighs> somebody get on that please I know a lot of you are writers do it <laughs> um and I also thought when she took off the hat, maybe the hat was enchanted. Maybe then the whole thing was going to be revealed. But no, that didn't happen either. And when she shows up, um, the Fury doesn't look at her. 
And I think, okay, the Fury's going to fly away, or the Fury's going to sneak around, or the Fury's going to figure something out. I swear to God, the Fury stands in the exact same spot in the exact same position for two hours, while Percy and his friends go into Medusa's house and have dinner with her and talk with her. They're all sitting there talking, so, and the Fury's out there like... Maybe I should call my sisters. No, not doing that. Maybe I should come up with a strategy. No, not doing that. Maybe I should call Hades now. No. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the garden is so delightful. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> oh, oh my, oh my God! I've been talking about this for twenty minutes. Okay, I'm gonna try to get to the point already. <clears throat> So when we first get to her garden, it's nothing but monsters turned to stone out yeah. front. And at first I was like, oh no, oh no, they're going to do what they teased in the first episode. Yeah. Medusa's not the villain. She's not a monster. She's only turning monsters to stone. And at first it looked like they were doing that. She's like, oh, what? A daughter of Annabeth? You think I would hold a grudge against you just because you're the daughter of Annabeth? And I screamed, yes, because that's what you did in the book. And I think that's when I threw the tissue box at the TV. <laughs> And yeah, she's like, what? I'm not a monster. The gods gave me a gift to make sure I would never be bullied again. And I'm like, oh my god, you're doing the Tumblr story! <laughs> oh, I've gone over this before, but you've said I should go over it again, so I will. Um, okay, oldest version of Medusa, monster from birth, always evil, always a monster. That's just how it is. It's the most basic version um, then came the Hesiod version. Hesiod version. Medusa, born human, even though her sisters were born monsters. It makes no sense, but whatever. She was born human. She was a vain woman. She seduced Poseidon in Athena's temple because she was disrespectful and had too much vanity. And she was cursed as punishment for that. So she's still the villain in that one. Cursed by who? By, by Athena. Athena cursed her for seducing Poseidon in Athena's temple so disrespectfully to her. Then came the Ovid version. Poseidon forces himself on Medusa in that version, and Athena blames her and curses her for it. Then along came the modern internet. <laughs> and now in the modern internet, because we can't have any women be villains at all anymore, because, you know, women are just a perfect gender. Yeah, of <laughs> yeah. course. So now, um, not only did Poseidon force himself on Medusa and she's completely innocent, but Athena transformed her as a way to protect her from men. And now, you, you know, she didn't do it to punish her. She did it to make sure no man would ever hurt her again. And everyone loves... Look, if you like that as your own little thing, that's fine. You know, you can have fun. Fan fiction is always cool and whatnot. But, you know, what? An the only reason I get a little annoyed by that story is because when I make videos on Medusa, I get people who think that story is the legitimate, God's honest, only version out there who get really mad at me for talking about Medusa. And so I'm kind of sick of that misinformation. It's fine to have it out there as a fun fan fiction, but just... Don't pass it off as the truth. And all, and in the Rick Riordan book, it was very clearly following the Hesiod yeah. version. And yet in this, the Medu Medusa's like, oh no, I was given a gift. But then it's so weird. It's so weird. After she says, this was a gift the gods gave me, then like five sentences later, she says, this was a curse that your mother gave me. So it's like, wait, 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 wait. Are, are we Tumblr or are we, or are we Ovid? Which, or, or are we Hesiod? Which one are we? I don't know which one we are. And then... And then suddenly, right the hell out of nowhere, she tells Percy, uh, Annabeth's gonna betray you. I promise to help you on your quest if you help me kill your friends. And I'm like, where did that come from? I don't understand her motivation at all. And then it gets a little cool. Then suddenly they go downstairs and fire magically appears on the stairs because it's motion-activated fire stairs. And then suddenly they're actually in, like, this big lair she has down there. And it looks very Greek. And it's clear she actually has been killing innocent people. It's like... Okay, I don't know what version we are anymore. Yeah. And then Medusa comes down and goes, I hate you both because Percy is choosing to serve his father rather than save his mom. Even though in episode two he made it very clear that he doesn't give a crap about his father and he's only doing this to save his mom. And then she's also mad at Annabeth for not turning Percy in. What's going on? What is Medusa's character? I can't follow it. Pick one. You don't, you, they're doing all four versions and I can't tell what's happening anymore. 
right? They're trying to have their cake, eat it too, then spit it back out and eat it again. I can't deal with They'll this. They'll spit it out and then make <laughs> us eat oh, it. Oh, yeah. Okay, that better version. They're like mama birding us. <laughs> but here, when, when it was revealed that she has that huge layer and it actually looks Greek and it actually has statues, I was like, okay, this is actually kind of cool. And this yeah. is where you were like, hey, it's cool. It's like a labyrinth of statues and stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, this could lead to a really cool action scene. Action scene is over in five seconds. What action scene? Again. <laughs> and I don't want to hear any bullshit about, well, they didn't have any time because they spent like 20 goddamn minutes on Medusa stuff that wasn't in the book that didn't matter. <laughs> I'm so done with it. But honey, this show is an accurate description of the books it doesn't stray from the books you need, at all you need to get your hand off me <laughs> <laughs> you need to get your hand off me right now <laughs> i'm gonna tickle you yeah. <laughs> i love you but my god <laughs> that's how it was oh my god no <laughs> no yeah, like, like she said, I never thought I'd say this, but there are things in the movie that are better than in this show. Look, this show is closer to the books than the movie. It's no debate. I, it, it is closer to the books than the movie. But the movie, um, and this is probably because of Chris Columbus's directing, has way better pacing. It, like, knows how to be a movie more. Mm. Like, even though it doesn't quite capture the magic of the books, it does capture the pacing better. And even the friendships are a little better in the movie, I felt. Because yeah, I'm not feeling better. them all here! Way better. I'm not feeling them at all I don't all care here. if all these characters die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not feeling it at all here. It's just not working. Though, um, at the very end, um, when Grover finally has some real talk with Percy and Annabeth at the end, yeah. I was actually sitting there like, Grover, that's the first good thing you've said so far. Actually, that feels like real character speak. Like, I actually liked that An when Grover was born. talking. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, maybe th that was actually good delivery and that was good. Yeah. Okay, maybe that's why he was cast. But my God, they've been bullying him this whole show. <laughs> It's like you should have started the character with showing us how, like, stuff like that and how he's a good guy yeah. and how he can actually be sensible and stuff like that. Because you need us to like him right away, like we did in the book, and it's not happening. You, you didn't like him when he started to sing a song? <laughs> no! Yeah, um... So I'm not feeling it so far, and I was just, I was just dead inside by the end of it like i'll keep watching it i won't yeah no at the end of it she looked at me and said honey i'm sorry but i cannot continue this journey with you this is where i this leave is, this you this is where i get off the bus <laughs> <laughs> i'm not going to the final destination it's okay i'm it's a okay. u-turn out of here uh God. Oh, God. It was, um, I didn't like it. Oh, yeah, and then at the very end, Percy comes out with the head, and the fury is still striking. <laughs> and she sees him and goes, ah, now's my moment to shine. And just, oh, bam, it's over. And I was like, oh, that was the shortest action scene yet. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's like, how long were you standing there, staring at the inside of your wing? <laughs> well, maybe she was like, hmm? <laughs> she was alone out there she didn't need to Not it's like in um it's like that episode of powerpuff girls where the gang green gang calls professor utonium you have just won 10 million dollars really please hold <laughs> and then at the very end of the episode he's still standing there that was that <laughs> only that was funny <laughs> i'd rather be watching that okay <laughs> So, in case you can't tell, we were not fans of this episode. No, we loved it! <laughs> I don't know. My my excitement for this show has really dropped. My interest has really dropped. And it, it just makes me want to read the book again. Like, because the book is just so much better. Look, I, the book's always going to be better, but it could have been a fun thing to exist alongside it. And right now, it's like, I don't see myself ever revisiting this show. We're only three episodes in, some of you guys are going to say, oh, it's not fair, you know, you you know, it's uh, you got to keep watching. And Look, I will keep watching, and I'll be honest about every episode. It's my job to keep watching. And I would watch it anyway just out of curiosity. But God, I feel horrible for people who haven't read the books. Are they going to be able to tell what's going on? I don't even... I don't know. I really don't know. Um, 
Yeah, I, I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm not feeling it. I'm really not. I hope the Chimera is cool because that's one of my favorite monsters in Greek Oh, it'll myth. be cool. You'll only see him for a oh, minute. Oh, yeah, though. now I'm worried. Like, is it going to be another terrible action yes. scene that only lasts five seconds yes. and doesn't feel impactful? Yes. Oh. Prediction. Oh. oh, so sad. It's sad. <laughs> ah, God damn. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not going well. But uh, any last thing you want to say? No. <laughs> He's just so out of it. <laughs> I was originally just planning to maybe record a little short of you saying what you thought. But then you were like, "Hun, I want to shit on this show with you. I need to talk about this with you. Um, if you loved the show, please tell me why. I am legitimately curious. I will not shut down your opinion. I really want to hear what you like about it. If you're with me, please tell me because I need validation <laughs> right now. <laughs> if you have an explanation for something I missed, I'm happy to hear it. I might have missed something. We were talking a lot during the episode. But yeah, um, I don't know how to end videos.